Hey everyone, Samuel Kyber here with the behind the scenes to Worlds Apart 3. Now this behind the scenes will be a little bit different to the previous two. I'll be going through the animation chronologically and highlighting any key things that I think are worth mentioning. People do want to know about how I did things like the portal, the shields, the blasters and sentinel beams etc. These are things I've covered in previous behind the scenes videos. So where we left off in the second one was the Drogue have just invaded, Sam and Krista were trapped in another world, and everything was just going to hell. So we start right where we left off in Wards Part 2. Uh, I kind of wanted the opening to be very gripping and have this big intense scene where you saw everything happening from the perspective of one character. And I think having a continuous shot where the camera follows the character through the action helped reveal the invasion piece by piece. The main character animation for this was done by Red the Animator. It was really cool to see how he managed to give her such a unique run cycle and have her slip over and slide on the ground and have her startle when the lamppost falls onto the street. It turned out really well. The lighting of the tea shot was actually quite difficult because it had to maintain the same lighting outside as well as have a more unique lighting inside. Eventually I just ended up using some 2D planes that were emissive to cast some light and then had some fake volumetrics inside like the lights were casting down. We then move on to the confrontation from the end of the last part between Sam and Krista and Varric. Some people thought they would fight, some people thought they would team up, but I thought it was nice to have him leave so that we could get to see more of the world that they ended up in and to see what a world would become when the Drogue invades. But the main reason to have him leave was he was taking them to what was a giant derelict fortress. We were worried about having a second fortress because we thought it might take away from the significance of the first one, like it survived every battle it'd been in and only this time it was defeated, but I think the payoff was worth it seeing this enormous, just dead ship. All I did was like I took the normal fortress, I broke it into pieces and just placed it in the sand and it actually looked okay. Just rotated it a few times and it ended up looking like it fallen out of the sky and crash landed in the sand. I wanted the ship to feel very cold and empty. Originally it was going to be quite blue, but it ended up looking far too similar to the current one. So I ended up going with a very white volumetric look, which was a nice contrast to the black fortress material. This scene had two giant volumetric tubes that I moved and keyframed on and off between every shot. Having the three of them fight, I feel would have conflicted with the various new direction he wanted to go in. So it made more sense for him to be the one to instigate an alliance. And then after they fix the portal, we see Varric start to glitch out a bit. But through this, we get to see the giant holographic galaxy map. This effect took a lot of designing. Originally, it was going to be more like a solar system, with different planets orbiting around a central point, And each planet would have had like a moon or two orbiting around that. But it made more sense for them to be galaxies, as they are different dimensions, not different planets. I used an old galaxy effect I had made for fun a while ago and created these thin designs around each one that spin and change colour when one is selected. There was a simple particle effect used as well to simulate the stars and the entire thing was in one giant volumetric cloud. This time real volumetrics were used so the render times were colossal. The sound design here was created by After Infinity. You can even hear like each bleep getting higher in pitch as she looks at more worlds to heighten the tension of the scene. Each of the worlds shown was a separate map that I found on Planet Minecraft, the links will be in the description. I made sure each one had different coloured vegetation and different texture packs so that they all stood out from one another. The lighting for this was a lot of fun because each one was just a single shot so you could really focus on making sure each one looked really really cool. And then at the end we get to see the last world that they took, which was Krista's home. And we find out what happened to her parents and it reminds her why she has reason to dislike Farrick. <laughs> her scene had a few simple fire and smoke effects, but I wasn't too happy with how they turned out. So I kind of hid them in the background. The fire was of course a 2D plane and the smoke was a particle emitter that emitted these smoke images that faded over time. And then we return to Earth. This scene was animated by Sophie Cat, and she did a nice job giving the drogue a little bit of personality. You can start to see the decay on the leaves in this scene, since the drogue arrived and they started exhausting all the 
world's resources. This scene was actually meant to be about twice as long. There was a deleted scene where Sam interacts with one of the dead drogue to, to realise, oh my god, they've, they've invaded this world too. And then Krista would have a moment with a bit of the greenery because she hasn't seen greenery. Greenery? Greenery. Greenery. Because she hasn't seen greenery for so long. But it was a bit too hard to convey those specific emotions, and it didn't really add too much to the overall story. And at that point, I had the layout of the full animation in place, and I was looking for places to cut back on to reduce the runtime a bit. The destroyed city scene was actually almost entirely cut. Not too much happened here that added to the main story. No one found anything or interacted with anyone, but it was a nice contrast to the opening to highlight the ruins of the previous battle and misery the world is now living through. That scene ran so poorly. The entire city was covered in rain particles that were clumps of small pieces of... Geometry. And the scene was the slowest scene to render. And what's worse is after it rendered, it didn't look very good, so I re-rendered the whole thing. The ripples in the water weren't showing, and the lighting looked pretty bad. For the ripples, I used an image sequence as a glossy bump map which was then layered with a glossy noise texture to create the puddles with the intense reflections of the buildings. A huge sphere with a noise texture on was rotating the entire time around the scene, and this was used as fog using render layers, so it gave the illusion of moving 3D mist. We then returned to the office, so Sam can rally his friends and plan the retaliation. I tried to make the office look like it had a few battles there recently, by boarding up some of the windows. And this scene was fully animated by Luke. It ended up being around two minutes long, with a lot of characters, so I was really impressed by how much he managed to animate. This was the perfect spot for a little dirt moment, which helps break up the tension once in a while. Towards the end of the scene, Krista starts to feel like there's no hope, since every world has suffered the same fate. But then Sam comes out to reassure her that they can do this if they stick together. But it was quite a specific emotion that was very hard to convey without dialogue. The hologram that you saw of the fortress was very similar to the galaxy map from before. I used the same wireframe material and added a volumetric cone beneath it like it was projecting the hologram. I think one of the joke ideas we had was to have giant derp show up and punch a drogue ship out of the sky, but I think it would have been a bit too ridiculous. Somehow I managed to get away with using particles for most of the blaster shots, and none of them pass through any of the characters accidentally, which is quite surprising. Later on I bring back another continuous shot of the battle to show the scale of it, with lots of major things happening in quick succession. And even gave a little nod to Blocking Dead, having David and Derp standing out at the front. When the three main characters arrive at the fortress, I wanted to bring back Varric's weapons from Worlds Apart 1. I felt it gave his fight scene more meaning using the weapons he was stripped of to fight the people that exiled him, but it didn't make much sense for him to use a two-handed weapon, so he gave that to Sam, which also helped mix up the sentinel fight scene at the end, so it wasn't so similar to the previous one in Worlds Part 2. I was having a lot of difficulty making that scene look good, as there wasn't a map to take advantage of. Without having mist and terrain, it was starting to look very basic. So thankfully David sent me his clouds from Songs of War, which really made the scene look pretty awesome and filled in the gaps where the terrain usually would be. Varric deciding to hold off the drogue was a pretty big moment for his character. He chose to aid those who helped him despite all the wrong he did, and fight those who wronged him despite all the work he did for them. The shot where he walks out with his blade was intended as like a sunset shot to show his life coming to an end. And here we get to see how someone with one arm can still put up a pretty good fight. This fight scene was animated by Zillion, and I basically told him, have him just take everyone out. He was very creative with the choreography. The only moment I told him to include was a big super punch, which he used before in Worlds Part 1. And when Varric throws his sword in the air, it actually went ridiculously high and kept spinning off camera making the moment feel that much more impressive. As we saw in Worlds Part 2, there were two sentinel cubes beside the drogue overlord, which we jokingly refer to as Mados, it's like a play on GLaDOS, and now we finally get to face them. This was the most ambitious fight scene we've done in the Worlds Part story so far, again animated by Zillion. We had so many options at our disposal, and the area seemed so tiny to have a fight scene, so one of the ideas we had was to include floating platforms around the interior that the characters would jump across and take out tons of drogue 
but somehow we managed to avoid that and still have a pretty epic fight scene in such a small space. There were a few key moments that I wanted to happen, the dual sentinel beams knocking Krista back, and at least taking out one of the sentinels as a team, since Krista basically soloed the one in Worlds Part 2. Zillion added a bunch of cool moments like running up the wall, mounting the sentinel and backflipping off while simultaneously shooting it. Some suddenly got really athletic, and funnily enough, that cannon that he has only managed to kill one thing. Varric never hit anything with it. Poor Varric. What made the scene look so good was all the weapons and particles had bright, saturated colours against a pretty dark, colourless background, so the action really stood out. I laid out a bunch of spotlights around the platform to make sure every angle had an appropriate amount of light, while leaving the rest of the map without light so the mist could create these cool silhouettes on the spikes coming down from the ceiling. The second part to Varric's fight was very different to the first. This time he's completely overwhelmed as he makes his last stand, deflecting as many bullets as he can until his shield drops and gets hit more and more until he falls to his knees. The sound design here got very hectic, just have a listen. Defeating the second sentinel as a team was essential, and I had the idea for her to throw the blade to slice off the turret, and for Sam to catch it and throw it back. And of course Zillian made this look beautiful, as expected. Structuring a sequence with three fight scenes happening at once was a huge challenge, but honestly it was the proudest work I've done so far. It flowed so nicely, and people said they were on the edge of their seat throughout the whole thing. I wanted to start with Sam and Krista being overpowered by two sentinels, but then have one get taken out so we think things are going well, then cut to Varric who's holding them off but his shields drop and he falls to the floor so it's not going so well, but then it cuts to the city battle which is kind of going well in some areas but not so much in others, ending with a final blow to the second sentinel, and things seem to be going well again. Until... We wanted to give Mado some kind of defensive mechanism besides the two bodyguards, so I wanted giant arm blades, because who doesn't? They seem to match the design of Maddox quite well, who's also hanging from the ceiling. The blades were modelled and rigged by Phoenix, who did an amazing job matching the aesthetic of the drogue. It's just a shame we couldn't see the full design, as a lot of it was hidden near the ceiling. You can even see them on the ceiling retracted as Sam and Krista walk towards the platform. And then we see Varric's execution. I knew Varric was going to die from the beginning, Despite showing signs of change, he was responsible for a lot of suffering. His redemption art seemed to take him to a pretty noble death. I wanted to get one final fight scene before the drogue were defeated, to show Sam fighting on his own for once, again animated by Zillion. The sounds for these blades were found accidentally as I was browsing through my sound library. They were originally going to be simple sword sounds, but these sounded so much cooler. When Mados is defeated, I wanted to avoid having the typical shutdown of the army like you see in most alien invasion movies. Instead, it made more sense for the one controlling the civilians to lose its influence and have them turn on the drogue at the end. Some people were wondering what happened to the drogue after that. I imagine some of them fled, maybe others were captured, and I was going to include a scene to show what happened, but it didn't really fit anywhere when the final sequence was playing out. We then get the sequence of Sam saving Krista as the fortress falls out of the sky. I was originally planning to have the fortress on fire, but I could never get the fire to look good enough, and it would have looked too similar to when the fortress is normal, since it has all the orange energy around it. So I think a huge black husk falling out of the sky worked better. Sam takes a moment to acknowledge Varric's sacrifice, and then he runs towards the ship. This was animated by Red once again, and he did a great job adding all the little details, like tripping on a body and then jumping over another. It ended up looking so clean. The set where Sam holds Krista was originally a hillside with a bunch of trees. I redesigned the flat area in Minecraft and built some custom trees in a more acacia style. I made them to nicely frame the shot of the fortress falling out of the background. This shot was the one I wanted to show before Worlds Apart 1 even released. Even the song was chosen very early on, so it had to turn out epic, which hopefully people thought so. Some people said that the fortress get <laughs> Some people said that the fortress is. Some people said that the fortress. Fortress. God, I cannot speak today. 
Some people mentioned that the fortress was going to fall on the city. It's a bit hard to tell, but the fortress is actually pretty far from the city. The intent was to have it fall in the ocean just before it. We start to see the world return back to normal after the conflict, and finally get to see Krista's world with greenery, which looked very pretty. When Sam walks through the office, there's a few little easter eggs, like Echo Soldier in the TV in the back, Thomas drinking his derp juice, and at the last second his eyes go from side to side. I even accidentally predicted Thomas's next animation by putting the aquatic update. When we go to the gravestone in Krista's garden, we're led to believe that Krista didn't make it, and that Sam was mourning her death. The intent was to make people believe that she had died, but I think I managed to trick quite a lot of people. It turns out that they had recovered Varric from the wreckage and gave him a proper burial. I don't think anyone noticed, but I placed an orange flower and a blue flower on either side of the grave to symbolise the alliance that they shared. In early storyboarding, Krista was originally going to die, but the ending would have been far too depressing for both main characters to perish at the end. Nothing would have been gained after such a long adventure. Instead, I decided to go with a bittersweet ending, where they both lived happy, but not together. It made sense to me for Krista to return home so she could help her people rebuild. Sam even gives her a portal key in case they want to see each other again. This final goodbye was animated by Pixel and he did a great job making the scene feel like an emotional farewell. This felt like the perfect ending to me. The title Worlds Apart had a double meaning from the beginning. The drogue travel from world to world tearing them apart and by the end Sam and Krista end up being Worlds Apart. This was the finale to a trilogy I've been working on since January of 2019. It's pretty weird to have it come to an end. It's been pretty amazing to see all the comments and reactions and fan art and overall love for this series, and thank you very much. But it's not over. There's still the bloopers video to come out, along with the 45 minute long full movie which combines the three worlds apart animations together. I'll be doing a few lighting adjustments, fixing render glitches, and changing a few pieces of VFX, but other than that, Thank you for watching this series, and I'll see you in the next video.